afternoon good evening good night i just realized that we're all in different time zones probably so how are you faking it fam this is episode three of my podcast woo, woo, woo. we're almost at one month of me doing podcasting wow this is crazy i don't know how we got here but we're here we're doing it we're here we're queer at least i am i hope you are too it's a good life um okay anywho this will be a solo episode. I am just changing it up all the time. I don't think I will necessarily have a path to this podcast yet. We're in this together, so any suggestions, once again, in the notes, there's an area where you can send a voicemail or give me some feedback. So definitely go ahead and do that because I still don't know what I'm doing. I told you this episode one. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm faking it. I'm still faking it. I'm still figuring it out. But so far, so good. Uh, I just want to say thank you, first off, everyone who's been sending me just messages and who has been giving me positive feedback and has been sharing my podcast, faking it with your friends. That means so much to me. Uh, This is super grassroots. I'm just doing this podcast because I want to share things with you all. I have really cool conversations and I want them to be recorded. And so whenever somebody says to me like that, this is actually helping them, it means a lot to me. So I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's been sending me messages. It means so much to me. Thank you for sharing this podcast with your friends. It means a lot too. And I really am glad that we're in this together. My fake and fam. We're a fam together. Mishpacha. Uh, So a little bit about what's going on right now. So right now, I am in my dorm room at Stanford University. Uh, My roommate is Andrew. He is one of my dearest friends. He's like this big buff guy. So whenever I'm in this room, I feel safe around Andrew. It's good. We have a good vibe going on here. Uh, And I'm really, I'm enjoying the campus life. I love learning. So being back at Stanford is super fun learning psychology and I'm taking a human trafficking class about like the historical, legal and medical perspectives of human trafficking. And then I'm taking a how to write poetry class and also another feminist literature class. I I don't know if I'll be able to get into, but we'll see. And then also I signed up for podcasting. There's a podcasting class too. I signed up for it. And so I'm trying it out today. We'll see. But honestly, guys, I don't think I need that. I think I'm figuring it out all on my own, but we'll see. Maybe they'll give me some new tips that that will be exciting. But yeah, hello. I am now in California. Uh, I just came here two days ago. And so now my episodes will be mostly from here. I'll actually be going to Chicago next week. And so whoever's in Chicago, please let me know things that I should do because I've actually never been to Chicago. So I'd love some advice on what I should be doing. But I'm happy to be in California. And today's episode, so yeah, let me get to it, right? I'm just talking and being annoying. And so today's episode, what we are doing is something new and exciting. So I had this voicemail thing where you can call and send a voicemail in. And so I got two responses on my voicemail. So I got two responses. And so what I'll be doing is listening to these voicemails, seeing what advice people would like some advice on and giving it to you all publicly. All right, let's listen to the first voicemail together. Woo, 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 woo. All right, so this first voicemail is from Darlene. Darlene, what can I give you advice on? Hello, Miriam. Thank you so much for responding. My name is Darlene Ariano. Um, I'm originally from Northern California, and I am of the older generation. I will be 56 in December, and I mm. wanted to know if you can do a podcast on um, you know, the older generation coming out as gay. (laughs) Mm. I love how Darlene is listening to this podcast and she's 56 years old. I think that this podcast is for everyone. So that makes me really happy to hear that people of all ages are listening to this podcast. Religion being a big part of it. um, I am a disfellowshipped um, Jehovah's Witness. Wow. um, Religion in general and being true to ourselves being happy for our own self and not for others first. So if you would, um, that would be amazing mm. uh, to discuss. Thank you so much again. Very much appreciated. Have a blessed day. 
Thank you, Darlene. You have a blessed day too. And I hear that it's hard coming from a religious background to uh, live life for yourself and live life out of guilt. Uh, it's not easy. And I mean, like in the past episode, I talked about internalized homophobia. I talked about how for me, even though I am fully not religious anymore, even though I feel no guilt when I wear pants or, you know, uh, like have girlfriends, for me, there are certain things like having sex that I still just had this guilt for. Uh, and so it's hard to just say that like we can get over anything, even if we know that it's okay to get over it. Because here, this is a way I like to think about it. This is actually what I like to think about it. So uh, just some context on this is when I went, so at Stanford, there's actually this cave, okay? There's this cave at Stanford that it, nobody, there's no location as to where this cave is. It's known as the Wikipedia cave and you have to find it. It's like all by word of mouth. And so me and my two friends decided we're going to try to find this cave. And inside of the cave is apparently like all these notes and written books and all these things. And so my friends and I go, we... We hop on our bikes. I hop on my skateboard. We go, we bike two miles. It's like, okay, we were told that you go down Old Mill, Old Page Mill Road. You go down Old Page Mill. You make a right at the second fence. You know, it's like super like uh, encrypted and coded information. And then we're exploring this like field that we're told it's like underneath this like cliff, whatever. And we're going and we can't find it anywhere. We're like, okay, maybe we went to the wrong fence. Two hours later, we go to another fence. And then we finally find it four hours later, we find this cave and we're dehydrated at this point. It's a super hot day, but we found this cave and we go inside of it and there's pens and papers and tons of people wrote notes down and I decide to contribute. And this is what I write. I title my note, I title it, how to not give a fuck. That's what I titled it. And one of the ways in which I explain to people how to not give a fuck is to think logically and understand when your emotions are logical and when they are, they, when they are mis like, okay, when they are logical and when they are influenced by society. What does that mean? What do I mean by that? All right, let me explain. Okay, let's say, for example, you want to mm, for, I guess I'll give the example of wearing pants for me. All right, so I knew logically wearing pants is not bad as a girl. Once I stopped being religious, I knew logically that it wasn't wrong, right? Logically, there's nothing wrong with a girl wearing pants. Okay, great. So I knew that. I knew logically it wasn't wrong. And yet, societally, because of my conditioning, my conditioning told me that it was wrong. My conditioning told me that it was a bad thing to do, that it was immoral to wear pants. So I had my the logical side of my brain saying that, no, there's nothing wrong with wearing pants. Then I had the conditioning side of my brain, the societal side of my brain, telling me that as a woman, it is wrong, right? I had both of these a part of me telling me yes and no. So you have to know when to listen to your logic and when to listen to society. The majority of the time listening to your logic is the right thing to do. So in your case, I would try to acknowledge why you're not comfortable being yourself in some moments, coming from Jehovah's Witnesses, being queer. When you acknowledge, oh, why do I feel bad about this? Is it because when I kiss a girl, why do I feel bad? Is it because of my background or is it because it's logically wrong? Now, if you can tell yourself that logically it's not wrong, that we can love whoever we can want to love, then that means that you should just kind of put yourself in this uncomfortable state of kissing the girl anyways, of wearing pants anyways. That's what we should be doing because the thing is, it's called manifestation. It's called faking it once again, where if let's say you practice what you preach, you practice this logic of wearing pants, of kissing girls, of whatever it is, eventually it won't feel as wrong anymore. And for me, that's exactly what happened. The more I slept with girls, the more I wore pants, the more I realized that actually there's nothing wrong with sleeping girls and there's nothing wrong with wearing pants. And I didn't feel that guilt anymore. So if let's say for you coming from your background, if there's ever a time where you feel uncomfortable with something because of where you came from, I would just try to acknowledge why you feel uncomfortable. Is it because of your background? Is it because it's actually wrong? You know, and if you acknowledge that it's from your background, then that's should be enough for you to be like, okay, I see this is because of my upbringing. Let me do it anyways, right? And then by doing it anyways, slowly but surely, just know by taking this bravery, by taking those steps, 
the guilt will go away. Okay? It will feel fine after some time. Okay? That's what manifesting is. You know, it's when you tell yourself every morning that you're beautiful. Slowly but surely, you'll feel more beautiful. Complimenting yourself matters. Something that I do every single night is I write three things that I'm grateful for, and that helps me live a more grateful life because I'm intentional about setting time for myself to acknowledge what I'm grateful for and reminding myself of what I have in this world because I have a lot and I'm grateful for that. Another thing I used to do was when I was recovering from my eating disorder. This is something that I haven't spoken about much with everyone, but yes, I I had an eating disorder. I developed it when I was 17 years old and now I'm 22 and I am still recovering from my eating disorder. I've definitely come a really long way, but when I was at a point where I was still like very much active in my recovery, every single night what I would do is I would write the three things I love about my body. Uh, and it would be physical or it would be intellectual or it would be about, you know, my stamina or anything, but writing things that I liked about my body helped remind me how much I love my body. And there's nothing wrong with kind of creating exercises for yourself to set this intention that what you're doing is okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I encourage it. I encourage you to to acknowledge the things that are stressing you out because of where you came from that you logically know aren't bad and do an exercise, write through things that's good about this thing, you know, write why it's okay. Just remind yourself every single day and actively work at what it is that you feel bad about and actively work towards making yourself feeling better. And there's nothing wrong with feeling bad about something. It's more, what are you going to do with that? Why do you feel that way? And what can you do about it? And I found that writing reasons as to why it's okay, why my body's okay, doing it anyways are ways that's helped me get over guilt, get over feeling bad about my body. And I hope that this can encourage you to kind of have something to take away from this conversation, take away from this episode to feel better about whatever it is that you're struggling with. And thank you so much for sharing that. And now we'll move on to the next voicemail. All right. This voicemail is from Crystal. Hey, Miriam. My name is Crystal. um, And I just kind of wanted to talk to you about dating. Dating. Let's go. Um, I... I'm very liberal and I'm very like progressive and all about like do whatever the fuck you want with your body. I'm not surprised that Crystal is very liberal and progressive because she goes to UCLA. It's kind of funny. Her email's from UCLA. Hey, Crystal, what's up? Your body, like honestly, I don't care. And it's weird because I would expect myself to be like, since I don't really care about that, I would expect that like I could date people without feeling like I need to date to marry. And I remember I I watched the show and your mom said something like to your brother, like, you don't need to date to marry. And I feel like that's just so engraved in my head. And even though I'm not religious at all or anything, it's just for some reason, I just... I feel so bad dating and talking to multiple people at once. Um, It's like... I try so hard to like not to like not have this opinion, but it's just like Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just morally fucked up for me to like date multiple people at once or like date someone and like Mm -hmm. not exactly see a future with them. And so I'm having a lot of issues dating. Um, And so, yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about that. And I'm I'm almost like, do I like it's so hard for me to even like someone Mm. if that emotion emotional part isn't there. So I've only had one boyfriend in my whole entire life Um, and I'm 24. (laughs) All right. Bye. All right. Well, thank you so much, Crystal, for sharing that and for calling in. Uh, I really think that's a very common experience to be having. Uh, for the most part. And first, I just want to say you've only had one boyfriend. You're 24 years old. I've only had one girlfriend. I'm almost 23 years old. There's nothing wrong with not having a lot of partners. This is actually, I'm actually really happy that you asked this question and that we're talking about this. I think this is a very important thing to talk about for young women, especially. Right now, we're in this phase in our society where 
women are very empowered to fuck around, to sleep around, to have a lot of sex. And that's very good. And that's amazing. And I agree with all of that. But there's a difference between just having a lot of mindless sex and having a lot of good sex. And from the friends that I've spoken to, and this is actually something that I've been thinking about lately, a lot of the friends I've spoken to have been having a lot of sex, but they're not orgasming. They've never orgasmed. They haven't, uh, they're not actually having good sex, right? And I think that we, although it's good to feel empowered in bed, we also have to feel empowered speaking up in bed, right? We also have to feel empowered actually having good sex, not just high quantities of it. And so I think that we still have a long way to go in terms of feeling empowered sleeping around because from the people that I've been around, it seems like they're just sleeping around because they're supposed to be doing that rather than actually enjoying themselves in bed. That's just one thing I want to say that there's this, what you're feeling of not of feeling guilty for just like sleeping around or just gate dating casually. So there's a lot we can unpack with that, right? So one is the marriage thing that you said that dating for marriage. What do you mean by that? Do you mean that you want to date somebody and then stay with them forever? And like, that's your ultimate goal with dating. And if that's what you mean, then I personally think that if you are looking for marriage, something that you need is experience, right? Um, I always thought that I would end up being with somebody who super driven, super intense, super whatever. And I ended up falling in love with somebody like that, but also super calm, super relaxed, super like knows how to chill and, and being in like, you kind of learn what you like based on just being with people and actually not looking for marriage. My experience was when I decided that I wanted to start dating, that I didn't want to date anybody because I didn't think anybody was good enough. I didn't, they didn't check all the boxes of my marriage boxes, you know, and I just didn't find anybody that would be good for me. And I think that when you have this expectation of marriage, when you're dating, it's very hard to actually find people to date because your expectations are so high that you're not going to go into people to get that experience you need to actually know what you want for marriage, right? Because through the experiences that I've had, I've learned more about what I want, about what I don't want. Experiences are good for us, right? Uh, An analogy that my mom likes to use is that you don't know what your favorite ice cream flavor is unless you've tried all the ice cream flavors. It's true. If you don't try, if you don't experience, there's no way for you to know what you want, what you need in a partner, what's a good quality in a partner, what's a bad one. By having, by by casually dating, by kind of just changing. And when I say casually dating, I don't mean just sleeping around. That, you do you. You know, there's no right or wrong way to dating. All I'm saying is to kind of maybe it would be helpful for you to take away this expectation of marriage just so you can get the experience and it'll actually help you find somebody that you want to marry. This is actually just not taking that expectation away, but reframing what it means to find a lifelong lifelong partner. And instead of just looking for it right now, acknowledge that in order to be able to find this lifelong partner, you need to get experience because then you can know what you want and what you don't want. And this will actually help you find this lifelong partner. So hopefully by understanding this idea, it might help you. And I know for Shlomo too, he went through the same exact thing that you're talking about, Crystal. And I think I love that you saw that in season one and that you brought it up from my unorthodox life. And same for him. His expectations were sky high and he wasn't able to get experiences because of that. And there's nothing wrong with having sky high expectations, but if you, but you kind of do need experiences to know what you want and you don't want. So it's kind of just reframing how you think about all of this might be helpful. And then I know you're not religious and I know you're saying that you feel maybe this like weird way about casually dating. If you don't want to be casually dating, if you don't want to just be sleeping around, then don't do it. There is no right way to be a woman. There is no right way to date. You can do whatever you want. Let me just repeat this because I think that right now I'm in college, right? I'm in college and of course there's this expectation of sleeping around, of going to parties. There is no right way to be a college student. There is no right way to be a person. Even as a guy, if you don't like sleeping around, if you like romantic 
dating and if you like, you know, more serious relationships, I feel like even in the people in my circles, there's more shame for men to want to be more serious with girls. There's more shame for men if they say that they actually like somebody rather than they just want to fuck. Right. I think that these are all just certain pressures that as people we feel and it's, a, it's good to acknowledge once again, when there's a societal pressure for us to do something like sleep around, like date casually, when there's a societal pressure telling us that we should be doing this. And then when there's actually our logic, once again, telling us what we do want and what we don't. Maybe for you, you don't want to be casually dating and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to date more seriously, that's totally okay. If you don't want to be sleeping around, that's totally fine. There's no right way to live a life, just so you know. We're the only ones living in our bodies. We're the only ones who has to experience waking up in the morning with ourselves, brushing our own teeth, going to bed and trying to fall asleep and having our own dreams. We're the only ones experiencing ourselves. And because of that, because we're the only ones having our own life experiences, at the end of the day, we know what's best for us. And we know what we actually want outside of what other people tell us we should be wanting. So if I were you, I would listen to your gut. I would do what you want, but maybe reframe the way that you're looking for this marriage partner because that will allow you to have more experiences in a healthy way that feels more comfortable to you. And they'll also keep you on your track if that's what you want. All right. I think that is it for both of my voicemails and this episode's a little shorter than usual but you know I'm just changing it up I'm excited for the weeks to come I have a lot of exciting interviews to do with different people I'm trying to get Condoleezza Rice on my podcast the president of Stanford agreed to come on my podcast Um, I'm having a friend of mine from Stanford who we're going to have a very interesting conversation come on to my podcast. I really cannot wait for you all to hear what I have to say, what other people have to say. Thank you so much. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to share this podcast with your friends, my freaking fam. Follow me at This Is Faking It on Instagram, on TikTok, at Miriam Hart on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube if you want to watch the video. Uh, And thank you so much. Kisses, bitches.